This is your bag, Steve. Thank you. This is MRA. We're in the... I, I bought my bomb bag to be like, just in case I need to go outside and sell <clears> DVDs. <throat> so I can be like, DVD, I found. We've kind of seen lots of stuff together, haven't we? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, you used to have this. I was just saying to the guys from Criterion that you had this big book called the Janus Collection that they yeah. still do, which has four DVDs on every page. And actually, in the documentary... What, they that, still do it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, OK. In the documentary so. about you that I just made, the era when your life was really tough in 2009, when you're pregnant and all this stuff's happening and the New York Times are coming for you and the Sri Lankan Civil War's happening, that was like... That's what Solace. I did. Solace. We watched, we watched the watched. Criterion collection to get through really tough Bad times. patch. So this is quite lovely, really. Naked. And uh, this is the first Mike Lee film I ever saw in my life. And it just... That came out while we were at college, didn't it? And everyone, I think we were at college. Everyone what was year obsessed did it come with out? it, yeah. It, it just kind of like just... 93. 93, yeah. So yeah, about a year before. So this kind of defined our time during film degree. It is British filmmaking, but it's <clears> just so gritty that I felt good about where I was, you know, mm -hmm. and that I didn't feel so embarrassed and that, because it, it was such an amazing film that it was really, like if you're in a council flat, that, that it just kind of, it gave you some sort of, I don't know, uh, it's difficult. It just made, it made you feel good because it's so clever. And then you were like, mm -hmm. wow, poor people down and out, like begging in the street can also be smart, you know? And it it's celebrating the outcasts. And that <clears throat> was really great to watch. I am gonna pick Kez just because I've just moved to Sheffield in the England and the whole Don't of tell everyone where you live the whole of the city of Sheffield <laughs> runs off you're famous now Barry Hines who wrote this and Ken Loach had directed it and I went to <clears throat> the local like art cinema for the first time and watched three different films that they'd made together as a team this wasn't one of them there was one called The Gamekeeper one called Shouts and Whispers or something like that and one called Threads that was insane about what would happen if someone dropped a nuclear bomb on Sheffield in the 1980s. And it was so extreme. Like there was like flesh hanging off people screaming. It went on for hours and like <laughs> saw the whole thing right through to like 35 years after where the kids of the people that had got radiation poisoning were like getting through it and the potato fields. Um, but this film is probably the best thing that they did together and it's just Have incredible like everyone of our age in the uk has seen this film it's just such a iconic bit of british culture and is really like captures the heartbeat of the north and yeah it's just amazing okay since i'm uh, oh god since i'm called missing in action I'm going to choose, and also I talked about Costa, I'm going to choose Missing by <clears throat> Costa Gavras. Yeah, this kind of resonates for what's going on in Sri Lanka right now with a lot of the stuff that I talk about and the reason why I'm called MIA. So this is like the first film that connected with that, though it's based on um, a situation in South America. You should watch it. Have you seen it? No. Oh my God, it's incredible. The cinematography and like it's it's kind of like real but it's very it, the aesthetic is very born free mm -hmm. like if you've seen the born free video oh that's the wrong one um what is better look at i don't know but maybe you should watch it i want to choose mm -hmm. deep pan which yeah. is right here yeah. where was it there deep pan just because it's the first tamil film story in this <coughs> whole closet so Jack Ottiard actually sent the script to me before he made it to cast me as the girl. And then I got fired off the job because they said I was too good looking. <laughs> Except that I am the story. <laughs> so they ended up casting a woman in it who was actually Indian. She's South Indian. She wasn't Sri Lankan at all. But I am the actual Sri Lankan refugee and I didn't get cast for the film. 
but he did ask me. He was, I was the first person he asked, but it really, you know, he was the first director to bring it into uh, a, a serious film space, a cinematic space. So I just respect him a lot for that. And he's a great director. Le Prophet was one of my favorite films ever. So I just found it extremely flattering and amazing. When I came in, I saw Badlands, and now I can't see it. Oh, you can't choose Badlands. You I, promised me you won't choose Badlands. I, I That's love my that favorite film. film. Yeah. You cannot choose that. Well, whoever finds it first gets it. <laughs> Badlands. Where's Badlands? Give us a clue. It's order of release, and since it's a great film, they would have released it way earlier than anything else. It'd be up there. <laughs> No, that's not fair. So, you cheated. Uh, it's my favourite film, by the way. So, I showed it to him. <clears throat> no, I think I saw it first and recommended it to you. This is why Terence yeah. Malick is a genius. <clears throat> like this, is just like the most genius thing. Do you know the budget for this is like three hundred grand or something? It's ridiculous. I can believe that. Yeah. I just find it really dreamy. I remember seeing it the first time and then forgetting what it was and what it was called, but remembering like a shot of a piano on fire and then that xylophone tune that's all the way through it and just individual images like dreamlike. Um, but it's an absolutely beautiful film. I want American movies to get back to this moment and I don't know if it would ever do that, but this is just like, I've made I could watch this already. I don't know what really? it's rated. Yeah, I, I have. I put it on and I just force him to watch it because <clears throat> every time he's watching like <laughs> Transformers, like mm. just noise and CGI world, then I'd put this on to be like, this is real filmmaking. And he, he he's always so like blown away by it. Mm -hmm. Like when he when he watches a very like subtle kind of a beautiful film that's just got a perfect storyline and it's a little bit of an intense storyline but um I, I sort of narrate through it for him so he understands it mm -hmm. and yeah it's just so beautiful all right cool that was my that was my last two great well thank you so much yes criterion collection thank you so much for having us and Hopefully this, this is going to inspire me to just, now that I've finished promoting Steve's film, <laughs> I could take more time to stay at home and watch these great movies and... Um, make one of your own. Make one of my own one day and teach my son about these great directors. Cool, thank you.